Hello, my Nakamatachi. This is Joy Girl with a review of chapter 1010, Color of the Supreme King. So as you can see with this face cam that today's chapter review is a little bit of a different format than what you're usually used to. I am just currently in the middle of my university mid-semester exam period. So unfortunately, I just don't have the time to be, you know, properly writing, recording and then editing the chapter reviews like I usually do. But because it's just such an awesome chapter, I do really, really want to discuss the chapter with you all, obviously. Um, so you are just going to have to put up with my face for this video and I do apologize for that but I will try to spice things up here and there to um, make it a little bit more entertaining for you guys but we'll see. Alright let's begin. So firstly with the cover page um, there's not much that I want to say but I do really want to um, appreciate the amount of work that Oda puts in just even for fan requested cover pages. I always try to take the time and appreciate how much detail that Oda puts in. I mean, for example, in this one, how many different other supporting characters that Oda included into the cover page, apart from just the fan requested putting, you know, using the eye drops. And I know that it's only a fan request, so I might just be you know, reading way too much into things uh, because it doesn't actually mean anything canonically. But I do wonder why all the other homies are also using eye drops. Anyways, we'll move on to the actual content of this awesome chapter. So we start where the last chapter ended, um, which is, of course, of Big Mom Falling. And I'm glad that we don't actually have to wait to see what's going on with her case. You know, after the last chapter, there were lots of speculations about Big Mom's fate. You know, is she going to fall into the sea and then perhaps meet with the Big Mom pirates later? Is she actually falling onto Wano? Is, um, you know, is Onigashima already on top of Wano already? Um, or even, you know, is she going to fall, hit her head, and then are we going to see a revival of Olin? But the answer is much simpler. And it came a lot quicker than I expected. And I'm glad that it was none of these um, speculations and that Big Mom is actually still not completely out of the fight. And the reason I say that is because I think it's quite a bit of um, discontent within um, the fan base about how Big Mom's character has been treated. Um, previously, you know, a lot of people think that she may have been used sort of as a joke character, despite the fact that she's supposed to be your Yonko. And personally, I don't really agree with that. I mean, I think Big Mom has always, always been a fierce in character and sort of the comical way that she's been used from time to time I think actually adds to a character but in any case I think Oda is really emphasizing here that no she is still a force to be reckoned with that we should still take her seriously and that she remains a threat and we see that because she's doing some she's conjuring up some new ominous activities with the clouds so if we move on to the clouds here then Prometheus's dialogue and then the fact that in the chapter we cut straight away to Kid and Killer commenting on sort of the weird um, thick layer of clouds surrounding them and what that could be makes me think so it seems like Big Mom is conjuring up a new maybe a new ability of hers maybe possibly another homie. Um, the reason why I say that is because Prometheus was saying to Big Mom, you know, he was trying to convince Big Mom that Zeus is useless and that perhaps that, um, I was thinking, you know, is this him trying to convince her to replace Zeus? Prometheus did say that Zeus is only bringing them down, um, holding them back. So is he thinking that they should replace Zeus? And if that is the case, then with what or with who? Because Zeus, um, as we know, is... Zeus and Prometheus both are based off, um, their names are inspired by Greek um, mythological gods, you know, and Zeus is actually sort of the king of gods, you know, he was the leader of Olympus. So if Zeus is to be replaced, who's going to be stronger than Zeus, right? And there are some answers to this. There are some gods in the um, in Greek mythology who are known to be somewhat stronger or able to defeat Zeus. And one that really comes to mind for me is actually Nyx. And Nyx is a Greek goddess um, who is known to be the goddess of darkness and of night, whom Zeus actually was scared of. And then that, Nyx, the goddess of darkness and night, seems to actually quite fit the situation that we have going on here. As a goddess whom Zeus is afraid of, um, you know, supposedly, you know, stronger than Zeus, someone able to defeat Zeus, um, but also of darkness and night. 
And if we go back to that panel where we see Kid and Kill are commenting on sort of the clouds around them, it's a very, very dark and ominous panel. You know, it seems to very, very much fit the idea of darkness and of night. You know, so perhaps that's the new homie which we'll see. Um, and then that obviously leads to more questions and speculations about what's going to happen to Zeus, if that is the case, if he is replaced, you know, is he going to take his revenge and join the Alliance's side? Is he going to go back to Nami? Um, and that would be actually quite fitting because in Greek mythology, again, um, Prometheus betrayed Zeus um, by giving humans fire in, um, in the mythological story, which led to Zeus punishing Prometheus. And so is this something that we're going to see play out in the series where maybe Zeus's idea of punishment on Prometheus for betraying him and, to, um, and convincing Big Mom to replace him is to join the alliance and then join the fight against Big Mom. Um, and so, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. And before we move on to look at the other segments and look at the other characters in this chapter, we should also take some time to um, make a comment on another sort of update we received during sort of Big Mom segment, which is actually the location of Onigashima. So like I said, one of the speculations about Big Mom's um, fate was whether she had fallen onto Wano if Onigashima has already reached Flower Capital. And we see here in this chapter that that's not the case because Big Mom is saved by Prometheus and they're above the water and under Onigashima, which means that as a result, Onigashima is also just above the water. So they're still en route, still floating, but they haven't reached Wano yet. And I think that's a um, subtle way to give us a, quite an important piece of detail, which might come um, in handy when we see um, in later developments and in later battles, perhaps. And so now moving on to Kid and Killer, and it seems like they're going to be the ones to deal with Big Mom. I actually really enjoyed the scene of Kid chasing after Prometheus um, and just collecting like a huge mass of um, metal uh, behind him. And then we see later on in a few panels later that um, when we see Kid and Killer surrounded by those clouds, we actually see that Kid is still holding onto all that metal. And this just um, this just raises a lot of questions for me as to how he plans on using all that metal against the fight with Big Mom. You know, is he planning on just hurling a big metallic bomb? Um, but because having Kid and his metallic ability go against Big Mom actually raises a lot of questions, especially when we remember that metal um, is Kid's power and then Big Mom likes to use a lot of elemental attacks. You know, we've got Zeus and lightning and then Prometheus and fire. And then so remembering that metal is actually a conductor for electricity and then resistant to fire can actually have quite um, significant implications. So in the case of Zeus, and if Kid was to be holding onto all that metal, if Zeus unleashed a lightning attack, I would be scared that Kid would be in a lot of danger, um, knowing that electricity runs through metal, meaning that Kid just, you know, bears all that impact. And it's just amplified, you know, Zeus's lightning attack is just amplified because of how much metal Kid is holding on to. Um, but of course, as we know, Zeus is not present in this fight. And then, so if Kid is actually resistant to fire because of metal, um, knowing that, you know, not all, but, you know, a lot of metals are resistant to fire, are pretty, you know, um, resistant against fire, which means that Prometheus's attacks may not have much of a damage. Um, so, and so this may actually be the why Oda has chosen to take in Zeus out of this fight. So to make this fight between Big Mom and Kid and Killer a little bit more interesting, um, we should also remember that, of course, Kid does have Conqueror's Haki, with Conqueror's Haki being an important thing in this chapter, but we'll get to later. Um, and of course, Big Mom also has Conqueror's Haki. So I'm very, very excited to see how all of these fights are going to play out um, and what they're going to do. Maybe Kid can tap into what Luffy did in this chapter and imbue his attacks with Conqueror's Haki. But like I said, we'll get to all of that later. Um, because before we discuss the MVP or the co-MVPs of this chapter, I do want to give our props to Law. 
So Law did a really good job, which actually might be overlooked when we consider all the other things that happened in this chapter, but he did actually play quite an important role and his abilities was even actually acknowledged and recognized by Kaido himself. You know, Law actually landed an attack um, and then made the Yonko spit out blood. Uh, we should also take note of his durability. I think Lord's durability is something that's often um, underrated in the series. But, you know, in this chapter, he takes on a couple of Kaido's attacks, you know, multiple of Kaido's attacks, including Thunder Bagua. And if we remember that Thunder Bagua, um, back in the Flower Capital, when Kaido first used it against Luffy, that was enough to knock Luffy out. Luffy was in his gear fourth. So for Law to take Thunder Bagua in this chapter, not to mention that Kaido is in his hybrid form, um, not in his base form like he was against Luffy, that just makes it all the more impressive. Also, we should give um, props to Law for prioritizing his allies above the plan in this chapter, which I thought was a nice showing of his character. And in terms of his role within the chapter, apart from just um, contributing to the action in this chapter, I thought he also played a really, really useful role in actually relaying information to us readers and sort of um, injecting our responses to everything that was happening. So we actually get three panels of Law in pretty much the exact same um, reaction shot of just looking shocked, you know, witnessing what Zoro and then Luffy are able to accomplish. And it sort of just mirrors the reaction of us fans. And so I thought it was just a really great way to, um, and I really just appreciated that Oda included that detail there because it really just raised the hype of the overall chapter. And so mentioning that, let's move on to my favorite parts of the chapter. And there were plenty. I mean, seriously, this chapter was just phenomenal. Like we were seriously gifted with all of this goodness, all of this good action in this chapter. Okay, and the first of which is Zoro using Ashura. And okay, sorry, I gotta wait a second. All right, let's do this. Let's pay, let's pay our respects, let's pay, show our appreciation for Zoro in this chapter. Alright, so Zoro using Ashura and then attacking Kaido in this chapter, I loved this panel. The panel of him attacking Kaido, I actually wish that the panel was larger, I wish it took up the entire page instead of it being broken down um, with the three panels on the bottom. Um, but regardless, this makes it the third time we've seen Zoro use this form in the series, and actually the last time we saw this was exactly 500 chapters ago, so it was back in 510, chapter 510, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and this one that Zoro uses in this chapter actually seems to be of an upgrade. Not only because Zoro, of course, now wields Enma, but also because of the name that Zoro gives it, um, a dead man's game. It's a different name that, um, than what we've seen before. And of course, this is enough to actually wound Kaido, meaning that Zoro is now the second person, only the second person known in the series to be able to wound and leave a scar on Kaido. Um, and... Not to take a crack at Odin, because Odin is epic, but I actually think Zoro's feat in this chapter is even more impressive. Um, and that's when we actually take into consideration all the sort of surrounding circumstances and context of this chapter and how Zoro was able to attack Kaido in this chapter. You know, we've got the fact that Zoro is incredibly wounded. You know, he is at his limits um, because of the combined attack of the Yonko in the last chapter. As Law says, all of his bones should be shattered and then also Kaido is in his hybrid form so for Zoro to be able to land and then wound and leave a scar on Kaido I think that is just so impressive and you know obviously that was enough for Kaido to consider and question whether Zoro possesses the Conqueror's Haki and okay, so this isn't the first time in the Wano arc that the Swordsman has been hinted to possibly have Conqueror's Haki. And so come on, Oda, just come out and tell us, you know, just come out and confirm it to us. Does Zoro have it or not? You know, he's, he's said it before, you've been hinting it. You just got to tell us now. <laughs> um, because if it is the case that he does, 
The King's Haki is actually a very, very fitting name because if both Luffy and Zoro actually have it, it's a very, very apt name to call it the Conqueror's Haki, the King's Haki. Because, you know, we've got Luffy who must conquer the seas and become king of the pirates, which is his goal. And Zoro also has a goal of his own in which he must conquer all the other swordsmen in the world um, to get to his position of becoming the greatest swordsman in the world, the strongest swordsman in the world. So it's a very fitting name, that King's Haki. But of course, it still isn't confirmed whether he has it or not. So come on, Oda, just tell us. Um, but it's an interesting thing because when Kaido actually mentions this, because you do actually have to go back and wonder what makes Kaido question this. Because if you look at all the other attacks um, imbued with Conqueror's Haki in this chapter and in previous chapters, we see that their attacks are marked with black lightning. Um, the attacks have black lightning surrounding it, which is sort of seems to be the symbol that that attack has been imbued with Conqueror's Haki. And in this chapter, we don't see that with Zoro's attacks. You could argue that it could be the way in which the panel was drawn, that Kaido is actually hiding, um, has actually hidden the black lightning, and that's why we can't see it. But I don't think that's actually the case, because when we look at Kaido's attack a few chapters, a few, um, a few panels later, we see that Kaido is almost in a very similar stance, and the angle is very similar to how Zoro's attack was drawn, but we do see the black lightning marking the attack very clearly. So that leads me to wonder, is it just Zoro's brute force itself that makes Kaido wonder whether he has Conqueror's Haki? Because in either case, that is just super, super impressive. You know, whether Zoro has Conqueror's Haki, or even if he doesn't, and even if he didn't actually imbue his attack with Conqueror's Haki, he was just so strong that he was able to scar Kaido. I think that's actually even more impressive. Because if we go back to Odin's attack and how he was able to wound Kaido back then, we do see that he did imbue his attack with Conqueror's Haki. Um, and so for Zoro to be able to leave a scar on Kaido in his hybrid form whilst incredibly injured himself without even possibly using Conqueror's Haki, that is just crazy. And I also found it funny in this chapter that Zoro's attack on Kaido actually results in Zoro falling down. And I guess that just goes to show that only Zoro can bring Zoro down. <laughs> um, which is pretty funny. But that man needs a doctor now. Zoro needs a doctor. He's seriously done so much on the rooftop. I think it's time to let him rest, let him recover. Luckily, there are three capable doctors on Onigashima. So I wonder who we're going to see treat him. Um, you know, we got options. And I think this is also the right time to give our props to Kaido. So after everything that Zoro and Law threw at Kaido, the Yonko is still up and standing. You know, Zoro said it himself that he gave it his all and, you know, he thought that he would at least be able to bring Kaido down. But it wasn't enough to bring Kaido down, and which is just a true testament to how strong that Yonko is. And just when it seems like nothing can bring Kaido down, enter Monkey D. Luffy. And all right, okay, so we're gonna do a bit of a switcheroo here. We got... All right, got the straw hat. Okay, so they say that in a one-on-one -on -one fight, you should always bet on Kaido. But after this chapter, I'm having some doubts as to that quote. I think we could argue that there is another person that we can bet on um, and who makes a pretty good case. And I also mentioned in my last chapter review that I appreciated the very brief one-on-one -on -one fight between Luffy and Kaido because we may not be seeing it for a while. I thought that we might not be seeing it for a while. And boy, I could not be happier that I was wrong because this fight between the two was executed just brilliantly. Luffy's back up and he says that he's figured out um, how, how Kaido's attacks work, you know, how Conqueror's Haki works. And we find out exactly what Luffy has figured out in a series of three beautiful panels without any dialogue. And I think just this dedication to action without the need for any dialogue is fantastic. Because Oda is able to really showcase exactly what Luffy has learned. And he's able to showcase Luffy's battle genius. You know, he shows 
just how quickly Luffy has picked up this new technique and how he's able to proficiently utilize something that he's only just figured out. The action was just phenomenal in this chapter. You know, over three pages, we see Luffy actually bold Kaido, you know, we see Luffy being able to bring Kaido down just in stages very steadily throughout this chapter. You know, we go from we go from Kaido standing up and then we see Luffy bring him down to his knees, bring him down to his knees, which actually makes it look like Kaido is bowing down to Luffy. For Yon for a Yonko to be bowing down to Luffy, for Luffy to have achieved that, I mean, that in itself was just such an epic moment. And then that's not all, because after that, we see Luffy you know, land another attack, you know, um, just that uppercut to cause, Ka to cause Kaido to fall onto his back, you know, which is, of course, just such a, such a meaningful moment, um, such a meaningful panel that Luffy was able to do this and was able to bring Kaido down. Um, we also got to see a signature gut punch of Luffy's, you know, of course, this time imbued with Haki, which was awesome. And just to add to that hype, we get Law make that glorious um, statement that they're not even touching, that Luffy isn't even touching Kaido. And of course, we've seen this before with two other monsters. You know, we saw it with Roger and with Whitebeard in that um, battle, in their fight in Odin's flashback, where it's just the fight of their conqueror's Haki. They're not even touching each other and so for Law to make this comment um, to have this comment included here for Luffy it just really symbolizes that Luffy is stepping into his own um, that he's becoming a Yonko not just in name not just how Morgan sort of just forced this name upon him but truly in strength and in might he is becoming a Yonko of his own and that is just so so epic you know that final panel of Luffy in his classic pose declaring that he's going to defeat Kaido that everyone should know everyone needs to know that he's going to fight Kaido with everything that it takes just such an epic way to end the chapter all in all, this was a mind-blowing chapter. I said, um, I said in my chapter review last week that chapter 1009 is my favorite rooftop Onigashima battle chapter, but I think I can easily say that I was wrong. This, this is now, um, this is definitely now the number one chapter, maybe the number one chapter for this year, you know, we'll see. This is ranked so high at the moment, um, and it's actually in the chapter title, it's actually in the chapter number itself. It's 10, 10, it's 10 out of 10, um, you know, what do you know, that's classic Oda, um, playing tricks with us again. But seriously, it's just a chapter where it really feels like all of our love and all of our dedication to this series um, has really paid off. You know, Odo is really gifting us for all of the love that we've been showing this series or for, um, you know, over all this time, because it's just crazy what Oda has given us this week. You know, just when you think that One Piece can't get better, um, you know, especially with the action, we get this chapter. And I just cannot wait for the future of the Onigashima battle to keep unfolding because it seems like now we're going to see Luffy and Kid each take on a Yonko for themselves, which again, like I said last chapter, is fitting because it seems like these two have been portrayed to be paralleled, um, paralleled throughout this arc. So I'm just so, so excited to see what's going to happen, you know, what's going to happen with Law and Zoro once they come down, you know, Zoro probably recover and then possibly take on a commander, which I think would be fitting, but... Okay, I think I think we'll leave it there for now. There is a break next week, which, you know, Oda definitely deserves. The Wido arc has just been so consistently epic, and I think Oda definitely deserves the break. So that does bring us to the end of today's chapter review. So thank you for listening, you know, thank you for putting up with my face. Hope these um, little props, you know, made it a little bit more entertaining. If you're not too sick of my face, you can stick around for my reactions to this awesome chapter. Otherwise, please don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future One Piece discussions. And please leave a comment below on your favorite moments of this truly epic chapter. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon. Alright guys, chapter 1010, Color of the Supreme King, so Conqueror's Haki, who's Conqueror's Haki are we going to see? We're back to the fan requested cover page, 
um, and we've got pudding and um, Big Mom's homies putting eye drops into their eyes. I actually can't stand having to do that personally. Okay, all right, let's get to the chapter itself. Okay, and we're back at the rooftop. Help me, Zosta! Okay, so Prometheus has broken out of the box and we've got Zoro in pursuit. Yeah, that is really a testament to Zoro's determination and his just sheer willpower. Um, you know, he just, he took on that, he blocked that um, joint Yonko attack and he's still up, you know. By all logic, he should have all of his bones shattered according to the law. Wow, that is amazing. We got Kaido, that's pathetic, Lin Lin. <laughs> Luffy's down on the floor and then we're back to that same um, similar panel that we saw. I wonder if Kaido's gonna think that Luffy is glaring at him again. Um, even when he's down, he's glaring at him. Bop! Oh, Kaido seems like he's gonna start attacking Zoro, no way! Injection! Alright, Law stepping in. Short! Boom. Yes! Look at all of them doing their own little bit. Hmm. Antibacterial curtain. Wow! What a, such a diversified range of attacks um, and abilities for Law. Yeah, see, and Kaido saying it as well, your powers really throw me off. Mama! Prometheus is on his way to help, so is Napoleon. Kid and Kill are on their way to stop Prometheus instead. They're gonna deal with Big Mom. Okay, so that's an interesting sort of turn of events um, and where the story has taken us. You know, we were wondering after last week, is it going to be a five on one now? But it seems like it isn't. Only three of them against Kaido and they're not even at their peak strength. Okay, so Big Mom is safe, didn't fall into the sea. Uh, what is Zeus doing? He's useless. Is a dance and a dope. A dance and a dope. I haven't heard those words in a while. And Prometheus is asking for a favor. What are those clouds? Oh, yeah, see, Kaido's thinking it again. He did that before as well. You know, even when he's down, he's glaring at me. <laughs> what should I crush first? It's very, I think it's a very subtle thing to mention, you know, his brain or maybe his heart. Because Luffy's strong point would arguably not be his brain. It's not so much that he strategically thinks anything out. It is his heart, you know, that time and time again, he will hold true to what he believes and he will fight until the very end. So for him, yeah, crushing his heart is probably the best way to um, get Luffy down for good. But even then, I don't know if it's possible for our straw hat captain. Zoro, it's classic Zoro moment. He's not gonna let someone beat down his captain. If his captain's in danger, then it means it's time for Zoro to act. Hey Kaido! Oh, that's so cool, he's challenging Kaido! He's challenging the Yonko himself, look at that. The Enma ready. That's my captain! See, oh yes! No, 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 oh my goodness, no, 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 yes, we're getting a Suro, no way, we're getting a Suro! Yes! Night Sword Stalasaur! Yes! Demon Aura! Oh my goodness, how long has it been? Oh! Yes, Sorrow! I can't believe we're getting a Sorrow! That's crazy. That means that's three Enmas. Oh, yes, I love it. Look at that classic panel with Zoro at the foreground and then whoever his opponent is at the background. Look at that size as well. Kaido, massive, but it's still been, oh, look at that. The blood coming out of Kaido's mouth. Oh, this is so cool. I can't believe we got a Sura. <laughs> Laws in shock. Oh my goodness, and Zoro was able to do this after fending off that attack. Oh my goodness, he took on that combined attack from Big Mom and Kaido, and only moments later, he's unleashing his greatest attack. You're kidding. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Zoro has... Zoro has conquered Haki too. Is that what he's saying? Is that what Kaido's saying? No way! 
Okay, Zoro doesn't know it yet. Oh, oh, he's down. Oh, okay, that really was the last of his limits. Oh my goodness. You did enough. This wound will remain with me. Yes! So cool, I've got goosebumps. <laughs> yes, Zoro's coming into, um, stepping into his own. He's living up to the legend of Enma and the other legendary samurai who wielded it. Yes, Zoro. Oh, your generation is proving to be an annoyance. Thunder Bagua Pum! Far out, what a beast. I mean, yeah, he's literally a beast, but seriously. Oh my goodness, no. Zoro's down, Law's down, Luffy's down. Kid and Killer aren't here. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Luffy's back up. Oh, yes, of course, Luffy's back up. It's that steely heart of determination. He's never giving up. <sighs> Mark my words, you're going down. <laughs> Just got goosebumps all throughout this chapter. You can infuse things with Conqueror's Haki too. You're joking. Oh my goodness. So we're going to see Conqueror's Haki infused attacks. Look at how manically Kaido is laughing. He looks crazy like a madman. He's realizing that the fight's just beginning again. Oh, yeah, look at that. No way, he's just fended it off with his foot. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my goodness. God, look at that uppercut. It's not even touching him. Oh, oh. Zoro, Traffy, thanks for protecting me. You can go down now. <laughs> I'm gonna beat him no matter what it takes. Just his determination. I'm gonna beat him. You can go ahead and let everyone know. Oh. This chapter is the greatest! We got Zoro's Asura and then look at Luffy far out! What a chapter! Oh my goodness! This is crazy! This is so nuts! I can't believe it! Look at those last two pages! Oh! Oh my god! I cannot stop smiling! <laughs> okay, I think it's gonna take a minute for me to calm down. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna have to end it here. Oh my goodness, so good.